If you are on your journey to becoming a scientist, this is one of the biggest decisions that you will make in your career. I'm Dr. Stephanie Shuttler, and I am a scientist, I'm a wildlife biologist, and my YouTube channel is about empowering scientists and inspiring you to conserve the natural world. Today I'm going to break down the pros and cons of getting your master's first and then a PhD or going straight through to your PhD. First, I want to tell you what I did. I graduated from college, yay, and then I took three internships afterward. I had one at the Bureau of Land Management in Utah doing a lot of field work. I had one at Disney World, actually. I worked at Animal Kingdom, though. I wasn't a princess, even though I wanted to be, and I worked in the Animal Tracking Center there doing a lot of endocrine research and um, also some wildlife research. And then my third internship was in Kenya, and there I helped run a study abroad program, and I was able to collaborate with the wildlife professor there, Dr. Moses Okello, and we wrote a paper about wildlife tourism that is today still my most cited paper. So I thought with three years of experience after graduate school that I could just jump right in and get my PhD, but I honestly wish I hadn't. And here's why. One of the reasons is that when you get a master's and a PhD, you have two sets of networks. So you have two advisors. This is assuming you go to different advisors and different schools for your different programs. So you have two different sets of advisors and your advisors are kind of like your link to the outside world. Um, so when you apply for postdocs, when you apply for jobs, a lot of times, what's really important is who you know. And if the people on the hiring end know your advisor and knows the types of quality students that they produce, or they're friends with them, they can call them up, ask them about you. I mean, honestly, that's really how the world works. So when you have two advisors, you have two different networks that you can tap into when looking for jobs. Like having two different advisors, you also get two different labs. And now that I've graduated and I see my former colleagues at my graduate school, they're professors now. And these are the people that you now work with and collaborate. They're, they're your peers, your colleagues. So when you have two different graduate school experiences and two different labs, then again, you're increasing your network and, um, and you have more potential collaborators. You have more people to work with. Another big advantage to getting your master's first is that you should have more publications because you, um, with your master's you're doing research and usually master's students, I think they get one, at least one publication they, they should get, um, but even two to three you can get from your master's. And um, publications are what get you jobs in, um, definitely in academia, but a lot of other jobs as well. So having a good publication record, especially early on, is very good for you. You'll also have two different skill sets. Now usually uh, people kind of build off of their um, skill sets, but usually there's something quite different about it too as well. So for example, maybe you're working with um, genetics. You might start off with one organism and then take your project farther in your PhD and switch to a different organism and study system. So when you become a PI or when you're applying for jobs, this gives you a bigger skill set to advertise and to, um, to fit in to different job positions out there. It's entirely possible that when you do your master's, you find out that you actually might not like running scientific projects that much, or you might not like science that much, and you might want to change your mind. So that's really important to find out. When I got my PhD, I was like, well, I could always drop down to a master's if I don't like it. But in my situation, it was difficult because I had an international project and I got a late start with field work. It took me my third year to start collecting data. And because I was working with genetics, it took a long time to process the samples. So if I dropped down to a master's, I just might as well have finished my PhD. 
So that's what I did. And you're probably thinking, well, if I get a PhD, I'll be really qualified and I'll be more competitive for those jobs. But that's not true at all. Um, in fact, if you get a PhD and you apply for master's levels jobs, you have to do, you have to really work at trying to convince um, the employer that you really want that job. Because what they might think is this person's overqualified, so they're gonna take this job so they can have an income and get experience, but then when a better job comes around, they're gonna take it. So they're maybe, they're probably gonna choose the person who's at the more appropriate level because they think they'll be happier and that they will stick with the job longer. Really, the only downside I can see with getting your master's first is that if you are um, interested in international work, which I definitely was, it can be really hard to find a master's program where you can do research internationally. And this is because just international work um, just takes longer, um, obviously because of travel, but also um, projects are often delayed because of permitting issues and um, just getting permission to work internationally. So if you're dead set on doing international work, um, you might have to go straight through to getting a PhD uh, just because there's not really many opportunities available to you at the master's only level. Here are the pros of going straight through and getting your PhD. You get to finish faster. That's really it. And honestly, I would even challenge that, that you get to finish faster. Because you didn't do master's first, I personally think you you know what you're doing less. You haven't gone through the whole process of leading your own research, writing up a thesis, and yeah, you don't know what the whole research process is like yet. So when I first started my PhD, I really felt like I floundered for first the first years, definitely in the first six months. I didn't even have a topic until um, halfway through my first year, but um, the first three years I. Maybe not third year, but first. Okay, maybe the whole PhD, I floundered. <laughs> Let's be honest. But I floundered more in the beginning. But um, so yeah, so masters, you know, they typically take two to three years. PhDs, they really want you to finish in five years. And our department for ecology, evolution, um, and behavior, People finished, honestly, an average six years. Um, and I didn't have a master's, I finished in six and a half years. So if I had a master's and that would have taken me two years and say I finished my PhD in five years, um, that would have been seven years. So even though I did my PhD, I should have saved time. I really don't know if I did save time. And when you're at the PhD level, you get to qualify sometimes for funding that's not available at the master's level. So at my university, we had a fellowship that I could apply for as a PhD student, and that is another reason why I jumped straight through to PhD. Thank you guys so much for watching, and please let me know if you have more questions, and please subscribe to my channel. It would mean the world to me. And you know what? Share this with a friend too. If they're deciding master's or PhD, you should share this video. Thanks guys.